Everybody, today on The Grid, we are live poolside in Maui, Hawaii at Canon's launch event for their EOS R, the new full-frame mirrorless camera. We've got guests today, too. Really cool guests. YouTube sensation Devin Supertramp is here. Fabulous fashion photographer Lindsay Adler, a favorite of The Grid, and Canon's super tech guy Drew McCallum. Eric Kuhn is here. we got some giveaways. It all starts in just 60 seconds. It is brought to you by Tamron. Check out their 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's for Sony full frame mirrorless. It's awesome. Go to tamron-usa.com. And Westcott, check out their new rapid box switch. It has nine light modifiers and 13 quick swap light inserts. Check it out right now at fjwestcott.com. And Profoto, the light shaping company. Check out the Profoto B1X. Power in all the right places. Go to profoto.com slash US. And Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Aloha, everybody, and welcome. We are poolside at the Ritz-Carlton in beautiful Maui, Hawaii. We're all here for the uh, the big launch, but I want to introduce my panelists. Now, we have a number of guests today, but I'm going to start off with our first guest. To my right, Drew McCallum. Drew is a like a super tech guy at Canon. Mm -hmm. Hello, Scott. How are you? You were part of the launch last night? Part of the launch. Exciting day. Oh, love man. It. Such an exciting day. And we're also very fortunate to have with us Mr. Kuna. Hey, Scott. How's How it going? How you doing, bro? Yeah, good to see you. And you know the difference between me and Eric is today? Eric remember to bring his sunglasses. Oh, yeah. Smart man. He is. He is. Anyway, we're so excited. The big launch was at, I guess, 3 a.m. East Coast time, where <laughs> yeah. we normally broadcast. <laughs> and we were up late, and we are so excited. Uh, we have the camera here. I've been able to hold it. I've been able to shoot it. I've been having a ball with this thing. And I just came out of a, like a training class on how to use it. Guys, I know you've heard a lot of great things about the camera already. There is so much you don't know about this. So we want to get your questions, because Drew is here for that. What we're going to do is we're going to gather up all your questions, and the last segment of the show is going to be nothing but question and answer. So send in your questions now. We're monitoring your questions. We gather them all up, and then we're going to nail them with them. <laughs> I'm no, afraid now. We're going to have yeah. no, no. We have nothing but great stuff. I, I'm so excited. Um, this isn't just a camera. This is like a system. This is an entire system launch. This is a totally new system from Canon. It, this is uh, 1987 all over again. Now, for you guys who are, who are, who are, uh, we, we streamed it live, right? So if you saw it last night, a lot of the presentation was, it was about the camera, but it's really about this new mount system. Yeah, the mount system is pretty revolutionary. And, and what the designers can do, what the, the uh, lens engineers can do with the system is basically limitless. They can do so many things. I mean, we look at that lens, like the, the 28 to 70 F2, you know, world's yeah, first F2. F2 zoom lens. Uh, the engineers are ecstatic to what they can do. Yeah. And everything is smaller and lighter. That was, I think, one of the advantages of, of, of being able to do this new mount. Right. And, and when we say smaller and lighter, and a lot of that has to do with how we can design lenses. And I'm going to go back to that 28 to 70. If we built that for an EF mount for a 5D or 1D series camera, that thing would be significantly larger. I mean, the, the, And heavier. And heavier. <laughs> it would be a um, something we couldn't do really. I mean... We, you can make anything you want, but is it realistic? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, but it's really more than that, though, yes. because because there are advantages of getting uh, the the uh, the lens closer to the center that just go beyond. Because I think like when you're watching at home and you're like, it's a new mount. Yeah. So what? Right. Yeah. Oh, well, no, good for no. you. We're able to move those optics closer to the to the image sensor. The engineers can uh, refine those optics so that we have less aberrations in lenses, and we can get all kinds of nerdy technique stuff. But realistically, it's better image quality through and through with those lenses. Even you know the 35, that 1.8 compared to the f2. Yes. It's smaller. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. And also, I think that there's this whole system. Yeah, the new lenses are awesome. Don't get me wrong. But it, so Elliot Peck last night on stage said something that really struck a chord with me when he was saying, he goes, you don't have to switch to mirrorless no. because there is an adapter. What's the adapter? 99 bucks? Well, they start at 99. They start at 99. We give you okay. three options. 
Okay, but the adapter that lets you use your EF lenses. Starts at $99. Lenses. Nine, all yeah. right. So you can get, you can use the lenses you have. You can add this mirrorless to You're not having to go, well, i got to sell all my stuff and move to a new platform and all. You don't because you can. I got a lot of lenses. <laughs> got a lot of lenses. <laughs> I don't want to give up those lenses. Oh. And one of the questions that I asked, because we were live last night, one of the questions I was able to ask uh, to Rudy uh, was, uh, is there a loss of quality when you use the adapter? No, none. No, there's no loss none. of quality. So we, all you're doing is you're adding amazing lenses lenses to your kit you're not having to switch and add everything to it so if you get these lenses they're sharp and they're light and but this opens up a whole new world of stuff for you guys. absolutely I mean this this is my favorite right here it's an 11 to 24 with a variable ND filter so this is a, uh, oh, a two, yeah. this is, Ooh, two and a half to nine yeah. stop ND that's filter a, the video Eric shooters is, are gonna love this like, I need that over yeah. we're going to waterfalls uh, yeah. later on we're gonna take some some really long exposures but I'm using my 11 to 24 Mm -hmm. L series lens, EF mount, right onto the EOS R. Uh, this is this is going to be my fun, you know. So and it allows you an ND, and you can put in a circle polarizer. I can pull right. this filter right out. Yeah, can we show in. this to the? Can we show yeah. this to the? Yeah. So That's so cool. It just your, slides right in. That slides oh in. There's your, your ND filter. I've got a circular polarizer. I can just move, set this aside, drop in the circular polarizer, yeah. and again, any lens, whether it's this, uh, a 16 to 35, a, a tilt shift lens. The possibilities so are incredible. I have that lens. I have that 11 to 24. I've never done an ND shot with it. Yes. Because the bracket that you would need to put an ND filter in front of this. They're huge. huge and this yeah. thing just slots right in the side. Right. All right. This is so cool. We have a lot to talk about about the camera itself. Um, I'm going to tell you, this is just, so I have my first impressions with it. What I'm going to tell you is not official Canon stuff. I'm <laughs> not a Canon employee. It's not official Canon stuff. But here's how I feel about it. My, my camera, the one that I love, the, the camera I've loved more than any camera in my life is the, is the 5D Mark IV. That is my everyday. I shoot everything with it. I shoot course. travel. I shoot uh, uh, weddings. I shoot portraits. I whatever I shoot uh, is this. The the only thing, only time I switch to my One DX is for sports. But now I sort of take it as my second body, right. my Five D Mark IV. But here's how I feel about this. This is just me talking. This feels like a mirrorless Five D Mark IV, but with features my Five D Mark IV doesn't have. And I don't mean that in a bad way because I still love my Five D Mark IV. Don't get me wrong. But this has stuff like look. Full swivel, yeah. back, but uh, guys, they've done some things in here that that I think are game changers. There's this touch strip in the back. Oh, yeah. the when I heard about it yeah. last night, I thought, oh, that sounds kind of cool. Yeah, we were in a training session, and you can put multiple things on here. You can slide you can your IO. Do anything. Yeah, but can I tell you what my favorite thing was? It blew my mind. Eric and I were just <laughs> dying over this. So while you're while you're searching and you want to focus and find your focus point. You can take your thumb on the screen and just go, oh, I want it right there. Right. While touch it's at your eye, you can hold it at your eye and move yeah, your... Yeah, moving around. And on screen, so you're doing touch screen focusing. And also, right. this camera, have you ever seen anything more customizable? No, There's, no. I'll tell you. This uh, ring up here, too. Oh, and the you get ring. The, the ring. That the is ring. so cool. Oh, that's my ISO. That's my ISO settings now. You that's your ISO? Yeah. I said yeah. exposure compensation because yeah. now... Or your exposure. It's, I never it's, yeah. that it's crazy exposure. that way. Yeah, yep. yeah I said the ISO because Eric did, and you just always follow yeah, what Eric yeah. does because that's does. what everybody okay. does. But anyway, uh, you can set this to be your third. It's right on the... Your hand's right there. It's your like hand's you already on the control. If you're a manual shooter, you got access to everything right there. Everything. Oh, well, and if you're if you're focusing, like you said, touch and drag AF, you, you've got your thumb occupied. It's not the quick control dial like you would on the 5D4. Right. You're mm -hmm. using your thumb to, yep. to direct focus. You've got exposure compensation. The the speed Ooh, of which wrong. you can yeah. work with this I mean, camera yeah. is changing, unprecedented. Well, you can do whatever mind. you want. That's <laughs> you can cool do whatever you, you want. Just right. That's what I'm going to do, and yeah. I'm going to change this to exposure compensation. It's it's un, almost unlimited what you can customize with this camera. There's so many ways to set it up. No one's going to have the same two settings. Yeah, and that's what we, that's yep. what I think we relearned in that session. Yep. And there's also features that you haven't had before in any Canon camera. You also have some that you took from the M series, right? Uh, from the M series, we also have some stuff from the Cinema EOS side. Yeah. We, we have focus guides, which really, if you haven't worked with focus guides on the cinema products, and I see two cinema products up there, it, it's two focus guides where they, as you manually focus, it gives you confirmation to where you are, and if you pass it, it gives you two arrows that say, wait, you passed it, come back. Nice. So And it's he, so fast. He's a rocket photographer, so he shoots like NASA launches and SpaceX launches and all, and he, as soon as he heard that, he's like, Okay, oh, yeah. that's for me. There you go. And I can I, do that. And I'm like, I don't need that. But he's <laughs> like, oh yeah. Uh, but there, there are so many things. We're gonna, we're gonna unpack a lot of these as we go on. I just want to mention, we are taking your questions. We're gonna stack them up, 
and we're going to get them in and then the last break the last segment is nothing but answering your questions the whole time because we do have a lot of cover we've got some great guests coming up so we want to make sure we have time to cover everything um what else did i fall in love with because there's so many things that i thought were really really neat of course you can shoot in like a silent mode Yes, there is a silent, uh, completely silent shutter mode. Like it's absolutely, it's yeah. absolutely silent. There is no noise. So I can shoot Tiger Woods, and he won't, and his guy won't yell. You will at me. never know he's on the back swing. So look, you can I, take those pictures. I went to the first trap all the way. So you know, I was at a trap, and I was shooting in silent mode, or on the quietest mode I could, and I shot in his back swing. This is a few years ago, and man, his caddy came. I had all kinds of people come, and I'm like, I, I was so far away, I never thought they would hear the oh. shutter. Yeah, it's insane. But this is absolutely silent. I got in trouble on a golf course. <laughs> well, I, I love how it feels. I mean, it, it feels. Ooh. I mean, it's, the grip. it's yeah. just like a DSLR. It feels like a DSLR. It feels you know like what? a camera. My, yeah. I, I, I've shot a number of different other Solid. mirrorless cameras just to try them. And the first thing I always said was, they feel cheap, mm-hmm. and they don't feel comfortable in your hands. And guys, you know what? Like a, a guy sent me a note last night, and he was asking me about which camera, and he was asking me from two different brands, and and. The feel of this, it's so important. Th- oh. This is the tool that we create our art with. How it feels matters. We're artists. This is this would be like picking up a paintbrush. It doesn't feel good, but I'm going to paint anyway. Yeah, you're going to work with this camera for two or three hours, six hours, ten hours shooting a wedding. You might mm-hmm. be on on uh, you know an, an event. It's it's got to feel comfortable in your hands. It's got you know the ergonomics, the the uh, the way that it feels in your hands, the weight, even the balance of the lenses. Oh, it yeah. all matters. You know what it is? You didn't sacrifice for the look. You didn't say, we're going to make it feel crappy, but it'll look cool. This looks cool, and it feels, it feels great. Good. It, it feels really good. does. It feels great. Now, you guys have a battery grip for it? We do have a battery grip for it. For It It takes two LPE6 and batteries, so you're not switching batteries. Yeah, you don't have to get Same batteries. Same batteries, batteries. Same batteries seven, for my 5D Mark IV, all those. Uh, you know, all these batteries, all these uh, I have cameras. so many of those batteries. So. I've, I have an investment. Like people say, they've invested in lenses. I've invested in batteries. batteries. Yeah, I mean it is. You have a lot of batteries invested. Oh, yeah. in it. This will take two of those batteries in the grip. Um, it actually is the first one to to actually um, USB C charge. So I, I can plug it in and charge. Uh, I can USB. charge it off my like Mac yep. Pro. You could. It's yeah. USB C. Yeah. Which, by the way, I hate USB C <laughs> on my Mac Pro. <laughs> Just want to say, I want to throw my Mac. Away, so we. I have dongles. See this big me- piece of metal hanging off there? That's a dongle you have to carry. Yeah. But I also have other dongles with me, and it's like dongles it's misery. Everything. It dongles for everything. everything. Boo, Apple. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> we this, didn't make any dongles. Trust and me. And by the way, that's why we're not poolside for Apple, because it would not. <laughs> it would not be the same kind of conversation. It would all be like how you ruined my MacBook Pro. Anyway, there's there's so much more. This um. There's so many cool things with this. There's a screen on the top. Right. You can invert the screen at any time. You can invert it to a black screen or white screen. The really cool thing I love about it, even when I turn the camera off, that screen stays on. And people I say, why? That. why? I do keep thinking why there's something that? wrong. Well, there's no mode dial on top of the camera. It doesn't tell you if you're in P, T, V, A, V, or M. Right. So if I'm looking at my camera bag and I go, what, what mode is that camera in? Or is, is this my video camera or my stills camera? Which, how is mm-hmm. it set up? I know when I look at that screen, even if the camera's oh. off, what Got mode it. the camera's in? Yeah. What's FV? FV. Uh, F, FV is my love right now. It, it's, it's P, TV, AV, and M all in, all in one. one. You never will go to any other settings because shutter mm-hmm. is automatic. Your aperture is automatic. Your ISO is automatic. And if you don't want it automatic, you just move your con- uh, quick control dial over and you select the aperture you want or you select the shutter speed you want or the ISO. So as you change those combinations, you're basically going into TV mode if you've adjusted your shutter speed. You've changed your shutter speed aperture and ISO, you're now manual mode. You don't have yep. to go mode, roll to nope, manual. at all. It's already and you can reset one. it with one button, one button. it resets. Now guys, I, I know we're talking about all these cool things you can assign and all. We have a class coming up on Kelby One, a full training class on how to use the camera. On the day that camera ships, the class will be released, wow. and you will know how to do everything. And you're going to be, we were stunned. And I, I live inside cameras, right? Oh, yeah. And Eric and I, we're high yeah. five and we're smashing fists. I mean, there, there's well, stuff in here. Well, because you can see also that this is, a, like you said, it's the whole system that's coming, you know? Yeah. The system is coming, and it's like, this is a this is a new day. Like yeah. you were talking about, it's, it's like, this is the step into the future. 
Yeah, this, this really, really is. is. You, this is this is not just a camera launch. This is the launch of a new system yep. and a new way people will be working. Absolutely. Uh, also, I know, I know you're probably wondering what the price is, so I'm going to beat you to the punch on that one. That's one we won't have to answer later, and because I, I think that is one of the big things. So the body, you can get the body for it. Let me make sure I say it right. Twenty two ninety nine. Yes. Yeah. Twenty two ninety nine. And it's available in October. And it's available in October. October. And I think what else is available? There's a lens that's coming well, the, that's available in October. The 24 to 105 will be available. Right. You'll be able to buy it as a, as a kit, so body and lens, just like we've been doing with our 5Ds and sure. 60s. You're getting an L series, an L series lens. L series. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you think about it, it's not a, uh, it's a kit lens, but it's a L series kit lens that is fabulous. Well, I got a question for you. I'm yes. going to ask a couple of my own questions. Uh, focus points 200, 300, 400. Um, 5,655. <laughs> so last night we mentioned it has 5,000, let me get the number right, 5,655. And somebody literally asked, is that a typo? Is no. that correct? We're like, no, it has that many points. It, it's crazy. Well, speaking of though, uh, I know we got to take a break because we got to bring on the next guest, but uh, then we'll ask, uh, we got to ask um, some other questions uh, from the audience. Yeah, so later. you're, so you're going to have to come back. I can do that. Yeah. Actually, you can hang. No, no. You can just hang. He's going to hang. I'm going to leave. Eric is going to go. Oh, Actually, somebody else is gonna if you in. look carefully in the next segment, you'll see Eric in the pool behind us. So <laughs> look for He likes the backstroke. He's very, very big. What can a, I say? It's a Kuna thing. He's yeah. very big on the backstroke. So watch. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. And joining us will be fashion photographer and favorite of the grid, Lindsay Adler, coming with, right back on this break. Don't go away. We're live here from Maui. tripod that is compact, that is portable enough to take with you anywhere, one that is adaptable to any situation, that will be versatile enough for any shoot, and is compatible with your other gear, giving you freedom to create your own perspective. Look no further, Platypod Ultra does it all. Visit platypod.com for more info. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey guys, we are back live poolside here at the at the Ritz, and we have been joined by the fabulous, you know, like, you know, you know Dave Clayton, right? Yes. I call him British superstar, <laughs> and you are the fabulous, the fabulous Lindsay Adler. Welcome to the show, Lindsay. Thank you for having me. We were just talking this year, fourth or fifth? I, yeah, fourth or fifth, I don't know. It, you always make it easy. I you know Drew? Anything. I love Drew. <laughs> Aww. Everybody I loves do. Drew. Anyway, <laughs> you got to shoot a bunch. I saw some of your prints last night. Yeah. Um, I got to see uh, some of your images. We're going to show some of your images. But what, of course, what everybody wants to know is what is it really like shooting it? Like, what's it? What's it like? Totally. I mean, you, you shoot with r the best gear in the world mm -hmm. always, <laughs> and you're a Canon Explorer of Light, and yep. you have access to amazing gear. Um, what do you think? So, okay, I can 
genuinely say that when they explained some of the things, like touch bar and ring, I was like, oh, and then like the focus in the back, I was like, okay. Like, I didn't, you know what I mean? It describes all of these technical things that until you hold it, you don't understand the applicability. I found it instantly easy to use. And then I was like, oh, this makes my job easier in X, Y, Z ways. Yep. So when I was shooting it, it was a couple times where I was like, oh man, I wish I had this two weeks ago, like for <laughs> very specific things. So the things that I thought made my job easier was shooting in low light, like in oh. the dark. Uh, yes. And then I found it, it focused so quickly. Like, I, I mean, instantly, whether I had it on face tracking or I'm clicking in the back or I'm using traditional ways, and that makes my job easier. So there are other things I like, but that was the real world, like I would use that tool instantly. Oh yeah. I, that, that's great. I didn't. I haven't got to shoot it as much as you have. You've mm -hmm. done like a whole campaign, and I, yep. I, I just, and I'll be shooting it more today. We were doing a number of shoots here, like on the property. Um, but that, none of that stuff really hit me till this morning. Like when exactly. you just hear about it, guys. Like when you're reading like yep. a press release or you're seeing someone talk about it, it, it's nothing. Like when you actually use it, these things sound cool, and then you use them and you fall in love with them, and you realize. Like, this changes things. It's well, it was the touch bar thing. Like, you were complaining about your computer, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, a touch bar. I'm like, okay, so it's going to be something that I kind of sometimes use. I mean, I used it instantly in that shoot. So I was shooting, um, one of the shots I did was as, sun, it, as the sun was setting, right? And so what I'm trying to do is I'm constantly balancing my exposure as the light's dropping. Right, yeah. And so I'm quickly, I actually changed it to be ISO. So I had it set to ISO, I think, 100 for the left click. 2000 for the right and then I'm scrolling between it so I'm just chasing the light just by doing this and I was worried about like at least how I'd worked with mirrorless like I'd, I'd seen one I'd never shot one but I saw you have to like go into menus and stuff and it was super annoying don't so get me I started didn't... I have shot some mirrorless <laughs> so the, I have the menus it's like a pit it's like a black hole that you go into and you you'll never find your stuff but so that was it it's like okay so I actually don't ever have to lift my face if I don't want to I have everything right that yeah, yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that. I thought mirrorless, like the idea of mirrorless, was get lost in menus. Hey, but what did you think about the EV viewfinder in here? Awesome. Well, so that was okay. So the second shoot I did. The first shoot was rooftop. Uh, by the way, just a little side story. So we're shooting lights dropping, and then we see this rain coming at us, and then massive lightning, and I'm like just a few more shots they're like no we're gonna die and i was like okay <laughs> see so, that's that's a real photographer that's dedication yeah. when you're ready to die for your art totally <laughs> no, so so i like i took took a few shots and so that, that was a practicality of that but the as far as the viewfinder what we did for the second shoot same night is we went out um to a park at night and we shot from midnight to about 1 a.m in complete darkness and i felt like i had like those night vision goggles but you could actually see <laughs> because I'm 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 pointing it and I'm trying to figure out my composition and I can't see in the dark but then I look in the back of my camera and I see the entire scene clearly. Again, I had never shot mirror, so I'd never seen that before. So it made it easier. And when I shoot, I have shot low light in the past for mood and drama. But usually you have to hold like a flashlight on someone's face, grab the focus, and then step away. Yeah. That's not <laughs> that's not a thing. Hey, can we look at some pictures? And we yeah. we have some behind the scenes pictures from Lindsay shoot. I think we have some finals and behind the scenes. And I'm gonna ask my crew to pull them up here. And yep, here we go. All right. So which one are we looking at? Who knows? We're yeah, looking okay. at the neon lights. <laughs> okay, great. So that what I did is I rented these light bars. Uh, they're super cool. They're actually used for event uh, like. They, they decorate um, a venue as you walk in. And so I rented it for this purpose because I wanted to see how it would do in low light. I had heard that that would be an advantage. So I said, all right, well, let's see if they're telling the truth. Uh, so it was middle of the night, only lit by these light bars. And I, I genuinely think I got like every shot in focus. And not that I'm a bad photographer, but that's not usually the case. I just don't show people. And they were, I nailed all of them. You're very humble. That's no, true. You're though. very humble and kind. So I, I, I was telling Lindsay, this has nothing to do with the camera, but I'm going to give you a side story. And I've told Lin Lindsay this many times. So a lot of times, I, one of the things that I do, and I tell people to do that's important as a photographer, is to look at the work of other photographers. Yep. And I go online, and if I look up like fashion or beauty, and I see a shot I like, and I'm going to add it to my Pinterest board, I'll just take a look who it is. 90% of the shots in there are <laughs> Lindsay Adler shots. And I'm like, I just love the way she shoots. I'm Thank just like, you. and I realize, 
oh my gosh, like Lindsay Adler is like my fashion idol. Like I, I, I have just a handful of people in the fashion world that, that I really, really like. But when you look at my Pinterest board, you would gush. You would be like, oh my gosh, I'm Lindsay Adler. No, that's what Lindsay would say that, not me. But anyway, <laughs> my Pinterest board is, is a tribute. And so not to get weird, but I like candles around it. No. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Goes, wow. Okay. Yeah. Weird. No, I try to make it go stockery. But I just want to say, I add those pictures before I realize they're Lindsay's, and I'm just pleasantly surprised. So hearing so your sweet. hearing your views on this camera, because this is, and, and I want people to, to 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 keep this in mind. We're all focused on the, the this camera. This is the first camera in this new series, and this is a system. But this is just the first step. This is the first camera. And it's priced at a really great way to get people into the systems. We're using the RF easy. mounts and all that. Twenty-two ninety-nine is that right? Right. Okay. It's really priced at a great price. And now we know we know it'll shoot fashion. Do we have the? Um, did you show the final shots? Did we? We're talking to Juan here live on location. By the way, kind of big news here. Uh, Juan did break the thousand on Instagram. I know we've been working towards it, and that's why Juan's here because as a celebration of him breaking a thousand on Instagram. <laughs> We're, that's the only reason why we're really here. We just happened to coincide with the Canon event, but we wanted to bring Juan to Hawaii to celebrate because that's big. You have more than a thousand, don't you, Lindsay? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I work hard on my Instagram. It is a job. I know, good but job, it's though. it's a great. It's a, it is a wonderful. Where can people find you on Instagram? It's Lindsay Adler underscore photo. I, I mean, I think this is. I won't dwell on this, but I think Instagram is one of the things that helps me get better because I know I have to constantly create good content and share it. So <laughs> I better constantly be producing things. So it's like, it'll, even if I haven't shot, I'll be like, oh, no, I, I got to go shoot more for Instagram. I think it's great. That's why on my Instagram page, you'll see days where I don't post anything. You're like, why is this got posted? Because you said the key, it has to be good content. <laughs> if it's totally. not good content, you don't want to put it on your Instagram no. account. You'll totally. die. People will dive off your page. They're like, Oh gosh, because people look at, they don't look at your body of work. They look at what you posted last. And if you post a bad picture, they're like, oh man, Lindsay's going down. Oh, so, so, <laughs> totally. the, the pressure to, to create great pictures is, is on us. So that's great though. We have a great new system. And, and that's, that's what I hope people take away from this is, yeah. is this is the first step in a brand new system. And you know what? I, I saw some people talking about this online and they were like, you know what? Making this, this was the right thing to do. Like making a new mount because when you when you look at it, it, it and, and I know I gave Apple some heat, but Apple has been one of those people, one of those companies mm -hmm. that will take things away or make a big radical change, and at the time you're so pissed, and then you right. realize, oh my gosh, they were leading the industry, they were pushing things in a new direction. So this and people are already on, online going, you know, they did the right thing, especially since you can use everything that you already right. have. That makes makes a huge difference. Hey, uh, when we take your questions later, also questions for Lindsay here. She will be here as well. So uh, we want to take your questions and answer them. We're not answering them live like we normally do in the show because we're going to stack them all together and we're going to uh, do the last segment of the show is just going to be on that. So let me check with my crew. How are, we, are, we, are we okay on time? <laughs> all right. We're going to take a break in just a minute. Um, what lenses did you use for your shoots? So I used all of them. That was part of, I wanted to, well, I wanted to test them out. So this shoot, it was a campaign, but I had held the camera for a total of maybe 40, maybe 40 minutes before I shot the campaign. Um, and so that was also a thing is how quickly can I adapt? Like how different is this? How, what's the learning curve? Um, and I'll, I'll say once they explained some of the other, like the new tools, it, it really was seamless, but, um, during the shoot, I wanted to see, okay, well, so how do these lenses stack up? Are they better? Are they sharper? Are they slower? Are they heavier? Are they lighter? What are they? So I shot all of them. Um, I, I shot the, the, the sexy monster. The sexy monster. <laughs> That's the official name, by the way, sexy monster. That was Drew said it, so it has okay. to be true. I, I mean, I don't, I, I mean, unless I, I'm trying to think of another lens where I shot something and I looked at it and go, holy sharpness. Like, because I'm not a, I'm I don't one that's the word she nerds. used. I'm I, totally. No, I'm not like I'm a, I'm a nerd, but I'm not one of those pixel nerds where I like stare at it and go like, okay, is this exactly like that's not me? Is it a good image? Did, like, is it have impact? Is the gear doing what it needs to do? Like, that's more important. But this is one where I kind of was like, holy yeah. crap. It was you you've never at seen two before. O, no, at, at two. two o, at two. That's why I was so impressed. At two. Right, but that's the thing, Lindsay. It's crazy. You did what I wish more people would do. You know what really matters? The it buttons fits. are great. I don't want to say anything bad. The buttons, buttons are, are awesome. The touch thing, very cool. Focusing on the back of my LCD. Yeah. Oh, that's great. This is the ring. Yeah. 
Awesome. What really matters is the image. Right. At the end of the day, and, and you guys, the optical quality of Canon lenses is such a huge advantage that you guys have over everybody. And 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 I'm just like, let's pretend this this sexy monster. Sexy monster. Let's pretend the sexy monster doesn't <laughs> even exist. The range of lenses that you already have, that you already yeah. have access to. All right, outside of the sexy monster mm -hmm. and the new lenses, what's your go-to lens for fashion? So usually it's 24-105. Um, reason being is for my style, I don't shoot wide open most of the time. I'm usually shooting with... Maybe I'm shooting at f11, f8, and so the 24 to 105, it doesn't slow me down, because I am. A, if you ever see me, I'm super like I'm very active. I'm zooming in, I'm getting down low, I'm standing up. I'm, I'm not yeah, it's like tiring. It's absolutely tiring watching. Just to shoot. watch. Yeah, well, I'm that's, like, she that's moves why, a lot. Well, that's why I don't work out. She gets down low and stuff. I'm I like, work out during my shoots, just not ever <laughs> any time outside of that. Um, so that's like that's my go-to. Uh, but I also got to try the 50, and the 50 was. Hey, we super have some more sharp. lenses here, don't we? Don't we have, because uh, this is the 24 to 105, Sexy Monster. We'll get some in if we don't. Yeah, we'll get some in for the next segment. We'll have more. Uh, we're also going to be talking about video in the next segment. So we're going to go ahead and take a short break. Uh, we're going to uh, bring on a new guest. Lindsay, thank you uh, for being on here. It was so exciting seeing your work, and it's always great to see you. It's, and, and you're so humble and, and nice. So, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> and, and, and Drew... You're just true. Anyway, we're going to take a short break. <laughs> Stick around. We're live here on the grid from Maui. We, hey, we are going to have our regular giveaways and stuff. Uh, we're still going to be giving away a Platypod Ultra and a Platypod Max. Or no, it's a pro. It's a big Platypod. We're going to give away big Platypods. We also have my brand new Lightroom book is out. We'll be giving away a signed copy of that. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. We'll send it to you because we're loose with money. Can we I must get it? be. You can get anything you want. You want a Platypod? You want a book? No, the book. Oh yeah, yeah. Done. Okay. Done. Juan, send her the book, will you? <laughs> Juan, does, Juan isn't really the guy that sends out the book, but you know what's great about Juan? He'll say yes to anything. I Juan, want to go steal some cars tonight? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Juan's up for anything. We'll be right back. Don't go away. We're live here on the grid from Maui, Hawaii. Poor Sexy Juan. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign up today. Hey, everybody. We are back. We are live from Poolside here in Maui, Hawaii, and Devin Supertramp has joined us. Devin, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Now, Absolutely. Now, I would say if you don't know who he is, but everybody knows who he is. He's a YouTube sensation with a bajillion it is a bajillion followers, isn't it? Uh, five million followers on YouTube, but over a billion oh, views. <laughs> over a, a billion, billion views? A billion views. Oh, my gosh. Well, last night I got to see uh, a video that you did. First off, uh, we're going to show you a part of the video today. Uh, you shot it in 4K. Yep. We saw it on a 4K screen. It was absolutely stunning. But I got to say, 
you've got some big aspirations to do some <laughs> of the stuff that you did. So you were photographing a pair, not just a parachute team. T can you tell us about Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're all about doing things you've never seen before. So we want to do something no one's ever seen before. So it's like, what has no one seen before? So it took a little bit of time to figure that out. But we built a slip and slide out of a cargo airplane, which has never been done before. Um, got a bunch of pro athletes and we just had a ton of fun. You got to see this. So I'm going. To, can we can we show the video now, Juan? Are we good to show the video here? Because it, it'll it'll open a whole bunch of questions. But just just watch this because I watched this and I I'm so scared of heights. Like the, the, you did things that were just. I have a whole different level of respect for you. Oh, I respect enough. your uh, oh. five five million views. I mean five million followers, a billion views. That's really good. But the other stuff you did, dude, you're the man. Insane. Thank <laughs> you. Check this out. So that was a tiny short clip. You, you've got to go to to your YouTube page. Your YouTube yep. page At is at Devin Super Tramp on YouTube. Just type it in. It'll be the first video that pops up, and you can see what we did. But yeah, that was all shot with this camera right here, USR. And it it is stunning 4K. I, I mean, the quality of it was was just amazing. So tell me about your experience with just using the camera itself. Yeah. So we're always about getting cameras into places you normally can't get them. So obviously having a small camera significantly helps with that. We were strapping these cameras to people's helmets as well. So we wanted to have like that POV camera perspective as well because we just wanted to see how far we could push the camera. So we shot most of the video in 4K. You'll see some of the shots in there. There's some slow motion in there. That was shot at 1080 at 60 frames per second. So we kind of played around with a little bit of both. Um, but yeah, super impressed with the camera. Amazing quality. Um, and especially for something so small, um, it's kind of unheard of. Wow, that is amazing. You strap this to somebody's head. So yeah, a little bit of a workout. Hey, we also got some, what lenses did you use? Yeah, so we used all the brand new lenses that they just announced. My personal favorite, this is just me talking to you guys, is the 28 to 70 millimeter F2 lens. Um, we played around with all of them, but for me, that was like my go-to lens. I'd say for what I was shooting, we had like four cameras, four DP cinematographers on set, but that was a lens I shot 90% of what I was filming with just because I was so excited about that lens. Now, now, now I, I noticed that you didn't call it the sexy monster. Is that what people are calling it these days? I think that's what, that was the phrase, yeah, I think right? That's the Lindsay song. dubbed it the sexy I'll monster. I'll gladly call it the sexy monster as well, or the beast. <laughs> but yeah, just incredibly <laughs> sharp. That was the thing for me, incredibly sharp in any circumstance. Um, and I like things that feel a little bit more heavy duty and rugged, and I feel that's what you get with this lens. Hey, can I, can I say that? Because we haven't talked about this. The build of this, the build, the actual build quality, I was really surprised because I, I, I have shot other, other mirrorless cameras and uh, the build of this, this feels really rugged. It is, it's a magnesium alloy chassis. So it is a chassis like you would see in a 60 or 5D. It, it's weather resistant in the, the 60 Mark II level uh, weather resistance. So right. it's, we're not, we're not going to submerge it. Well, we've taken it and so, well, I wouldn't just submerge many cameras these days. <laughs> um, but uh, we've taken it on many different um, atmospheres and, and locations, whether it's 10,000 feet up in the, in the air on the mountain or, you know, Devin in Arizona, it's 110 degrees. Yep. It was super hot when he was doing that shoot, and these things performed flawlessly. So. Yeah, so not only are the ergonomics really ergonomics. good, ergonomics, not only are the ergonomics really good, this thing feels real. I mean, yeah. this feels like, it just feels like a really good, well-made DSLR. Well, I remember if I saw the behind the scenes properly, you were running the 28 to 70 on a glide cam, Yeah, right? on a glide cam, running around all day. And then we had an Atmos as well, because with right. an Atmos, you can film 10 bit. Um, so for us, yeah, we just the, the build quality. But I'd say if you watch our video, there's several times where there's a couple big wipeouts in that video. Yeah. Um, we had people with this on their head going 40 miles per hour down a slip and slide with water spraying everywhere, dirt spraying everywhere. And we're like, oh no, the camera's going to be destroyed. We pulled the camera right off and it was totally fine. No accidents. Just had to clean it off a little bit and kept on going with it. People forget about those. Now, there, there are some mirrorless cameras that we always joke that they're grenades because if you drop them, they explode. <laughs> This is not the this is not the case. I mean, I, I think that is one thing people will be surprised when they actually pick it up and hold it. Yeah, you know, this is the real deal. Hey, we got some other lenses in here too. The fifty, ah, uh, the fifty. Fifty one point eight. One point two. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a one point two. One point two. I don't think 1. it's any better 2. than that. One point two. 
You better be you better be nailing your focus on this, right? Fifty fifty. <laughs> it's crazy sharp. The the it's crazy sharp and the depth of field at one point two. I know. I know. Is this the adapter? This is the adapter. So this is one of three. This is the ring adapter. So this allows you to add that ring, uh, the control ring function to your EF lenses. So uh, you can okay. hit a little clicky. Wait a minute. We gotta we gotta back that up. Right. Beep. Beep. Back it up. You can you add this functionality, this ring that I keep raving about. You can yes. now add this to your existing lenses. Correct. So this is an EF lens. This is a 10 to 24. So this is not one of your new ones. No, this is 11 to 24. But that's one EF of the greatest lens. lenses you guys have ever made, by the way. I love it. I just took. The, I shot the Library of Congress with this a week and a half ago, and it was. This is such a stunning lens, so sharp. But now I can add the control ring. Right. To that. So earlier we were talking about the exposure compensation, all that that ergonomics, ergonomics. Yeah that we were talking about adding that functionality because again, you don't have that quick control dial on the back. Now you've got it on your lens with your EF mount. So that same way of working, we, we've taken that same familiar work now because we're not gonna change your workflow. So that's there. It's just gonna be the same way when you add your EF lens. Oh, that's right so there. beautiful. It makes me want to cry. All right, let's get back to video. Um, anything anything that, that you learned about the video that you like, this is awesome, this is bad, what are anything? No, I mean, just 4K, there's a little bit of a crop once you throw 4K in, you know. But, I mean, for what we were doing, once that happens, though, you just bring all white angle lens. So that lens right there was actually a lens that we used for a lot of the shoot. We were using the 1124, the old one, and we were also using a lot for the 14 millimeter as well. Aren't, aren't the cinema EOS, aren't those crop as well? They're a smaller sensor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the, we, we shoot the grid on all cinema EOS stuff. Uh, but even the high-end ones, because, like, people will say, oh, my gosh, you cropped it. Like, most of the video you see... Ever super thirty five sensor. Yeah, is is is, yep. is crop. It's not like oh man, that's like that's a big deal. So now I'm not a video guy, so nothing in video is a big deal. I shoot I shoot this much video. I produce a lot of video. I shoot this much. Ask Juan. Juan, you ever see me push the button on the back of my camera that starts video? Yeah, never. <laughs> Juan says yeah. never. Yeah. Well, and, and that was one of our concerns, like picking up the camera, like how is the 4K actually going to look? Because there's a lot yeah. of cameras that say 4K. So we, I mean, we took the camera, we had it for um, a couple of weeks for the shoot, we did a lot of test stuff, and we were kind of checking, like, how does it look, the bit rate and all that stuff, and we were super impressed with it. And like, oh, 4K is definitely for us with what we're doing, the way to go. And we were super impressed. And a lot of the stuff we were doing was a lot of fast movement, and a lot of cameras, they struggle with that. But as far as 4K, as far as I'm concerned with this camera, I thought it handled it super well. Yeah, by the way, everything that you did was, was fast movement in that yeah, video. very you fast. You shooting from helicopter? With the video. Helicopters, airplanes, the whole shenanigans. Yeah, and and you really uh, go to his website uh, and, and watch the whole. It's th what, three minutes. It's a three yep. minute video. I Give watched the whole thing. I think I watched it twice last night. When you really see it on a beautiful monitor, nice and big. I, I mean, I hope you're not watching this on on mobile because you won't get to experience it. It it is terrifying to see it on a large screen. Oh, absolutely. It, it, and then it, we really, did a whole behind the scenes as well that you can see on that same channel where we kind of show our experience working with the camera and the different camera setups that we we're using, all with the EOS R. All right, awesome. Well, we'll be looking forward to all of that. Let me get your YouTube channel again. Devin Supertramp. Devin, Devin Supertramp. You probably already have it bookmarked, but if you don't, this is now is your chance to do it. Uh, and you've got a behind-the-scenes video there as yep. well? Yep, absolutely. All right, make sure you go see both of those. Of course, I'll be sharing them on Twitter later today and, and stuff like that and to uh, wherever else that we can share them, sharing places. Don't forget, we are taking your questions. Devin's going to stick around. Lindsay's going to be back. The last segment of the show, all we're doing is answering your questions. And that last segment is what's coming up. And let me see if we're getting questions come in. No, no one sent a single question. No, I'm just kidding. Eric <laughs> Eric is, is piling them up for me. So we'll have those for you in just a few minutes. Uh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going we're gonna to congeal, recongeal. Uh, and, and we'll be answering your questions. Of course, we have giveaways. Hey, let's go ahead and do the giveaways now while we're, we're waiting real quick. I'll tell you where to go to win any of our stuff from today. Go to kelby1.com slash contest, and you're able to just give us your name and your address. We need, of course, your Social Security number, your credit card. No, we don't need any of that, just your name and address, and we'll pick a winner at random. We'll send you either the Platypod Ultra, so you can just ask in the comments. We have to know what you want to win. So you can say Platypod Ultra. You can say Platypod um, Big big old platypod or you can say my lightroom book wherever you are in the world we're happy to ship it to you so and it'll don't worry if you're in a different country it'll be stuck in customs for six to eight months there'll be a new version of lightroom by the time the book reaches you anyway uh <laughs> but that's just the way it is it's crazy it's weird but uh go there that also i want to do one plug for myself so guys cover your ears so you guys know in like three weeks i'm doing a workshop in rome and uh by the way you know what i will have with me in my workshop in rome 
I am taking this bad boy. This thing is getting uh, three awesome shoots. It is going to roam with me uh, for my workshop, which by the way, there's one spot open. So I had someone drop out of my workshop for horrendous reasons. <laughs> God bless you. And uh, so I have a spot open if you want to join me in Rome, and that's coming up in uh, three weeks. So if you've got, you know, uh, free time, you're spontaneous, you like jumping out of the back of airplanes, um, <laughs> We're not going to do any of that. We'll be like, we will be jumping out of pasta. So uh, anyway, that's coming up in three weeks. Go to bitly.com, bit.ly.com slash Rome with Scott and come to Rome with me. Right after that, I'm going to Innsbruck, Austria with uh, my worldwide photo walk. We'll be, I'll be shooting there. And next week, I will be somewhere with Eric Kuna in the desert uh, shooting landscape. I'm going to shoot all of this in the next week with this amazing new camera. So I'm very, very excited to be taking this out. We'll be right back, taking your questions live, etc. blah, blah, blah. Don't go away. We're live on the grid. See that. Hey everybody, Scott Kelby here with Mr. Larry Becker. And I'm here because we have an awesome new class for you, all about travel photography, but not what you think. Right, it's about traveling right and making sure you have the things that you need, that you get where you gotta go, and we cover a whole bunch of stuff that'll really make your photo trips much, much better. Things like, which bag should you carry? If you go big, what do you add into the bag? Right, and if you go light and you're gonna be with your family, you don't wanna carry that much gear, What's the solution there? I'm gonna show you exactly how to pack it, what I do to make the most of these trips. And I also break down all the gear that I use. I'm gonna take you camera bodies, lenses, the whole nine yards, and a bunch of little accessories you're gonna to wanna to know about. At the end of the shoot, at the end of the day, what's your backup strategy? How do you protect your images when you get back to your hotel room at night? And then we're gonna talk about what you do when you get home with your images. The class is called The Photographer's Guide to Traveling Right. And it's exclusively on Kelby One. Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix and Perfect, jam-packed with powerful tricks and techniques in this class. We will let Photoshop amaze you. We will learn the fundamental tools in such a way never imagined. In this class, we will not only learn stuff which is not going, but also at the same time, we will learn stuff which you wished was easier and will make it as simple as ABC. If you ever wanted to learn some tips and tricks, that would revolutionize your workflow and that you can actually apply and also how they actually work so that you can apply it in your own way. This class is just the one for you. This is Unmesh Dinda. Join me on my latest class, Drop Dropping Tricks and Techniques in Photoshop, only on kelby1.com. Hi everyone, my name is Mimo Meidani. I'm a long exposure photographer and welcome to Venice. Today in our class, I'm gonna teach you the long exposure. In order to do that, we need to work on the filters, how to set the filters, how to set the camera, how to use other remote control, how to compose and all of that. And in the end, I'm gonna go to my Lightroom and Photoshop to teach you how to do the best editing with the black and white Lightroom and Photoshop. Come check out my class on long exposure photography exclusively at kelby1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. All right, guys, well, welcome back. We are poolside. We have Lindsay joining us back again. And uh, we still have our whole crew here. Uh, guys, the questions are all for you guys. So uh, we're doing a lightning round. So we're not going to answer things in depth. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Trying to tell me I'm wordy? No, no. It's just They're you know so short. much about the camera. Is like I know, I know I'm the same way. I want to tell everybody all the cool stuff. Uh, so we're just going to rip through these real quick. Um, first question is: So can we still uh, can we still use our lenses? I bought the 100 millimeter macro. Can I use it with this new body? With any of the three adapters, yes. With any of the three adapters, yes. Uh, frame rate. Frame rate. Uh, are we talking video or still? I'm going to say. Uh, I'd say FPS. If we frames go per frames second. per second is uh, eight frames per second in one shot, five frames per second in a servo focus. Great. All right. Uh, let's see. Looks like Johan's asking, uh, what is the biggest differences between the Canon and Nikon mirrorless performance and speed? I'm not going to ask you that because you're a Canon employee, yeah. but um, have you guys had a chance to shoot uh, any of the, well, the, well no one's had shot, none of us would have shot, shot the shot Nikon. Nikon yeah. Right. Canon for life. OD. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, you know what? I, I'm sure that someone's going to do a video on them. Uh, I, I, I looked at, there is a video online now. I didn't do this video, but if you search for it, there's a guy that did a video. Now, there, there were some specs that were leaked. But it was it was the it was the latest leak in the history of leaks because you guys kept this so quiet. Um, but a couple of days before, somebody leaked uh, the official specs. So a guy did a video where he compared uh, this to um, the Nikon. Now he's just going off a spec sheet, and I think going off a spec sheet is shooting this camera way way short. There were a lot of things this kicked. Um, <clears throat> it had some advantages. This camera has many advanages. But that thing didn't count all of the things that I learned about today. No, like there's stuff that, that even in his video, there are so many things that you will learn about this and you will love it. And like, he was no way for him to talk about the feel. And, and this is something, this, I'm just going to rant for just one second. And this, no, can, I, can I tell you, this is a mini rant. Can I do a mini rant? Yep, you may, this time. I, I hate this about the community. Whatever the product is, I'm not even going to use Canon just to be fair. We'll say it's the Nikon mirrorless. No one's held it, no one's shot it, no one's seen it, and everyone will tell you why they hate it, right? What is wrong with us? Why do we tear stuff down? You know what? Why don't you wait? Now, I got to tell you, I, my expe ex expectations for this camera were here until I held it, until I saw the images from it, until I shot it myself. Shoot it yourself. Hold it yourself. And I was telling somebody this the other day, how a camera feels, how it works, how it fits, Lindsay was saying this when she was talking about how it changes her workflow. That stuff that does not appear in a spec sheet. Don't be a nerd. Yeah. This, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. It, it really, it's about, <laughs> oh, I'm getting the slow, slow clap. clap in the back. Oh, I got nerds, the slow by the clap. Way. Yeah, no, well, come, yeah, coming from a table of nerds, but you know what we mean. Right, but 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 we're creatives first. Can and I then say we, one thing too? Oh, please. No, no, no. I, I think you also have to look at it as a complete package, because for me, these lenses are also absolutely incredible, but they come side by side together. Because for me, like the 28 to 70, my mind was blown. Um, and then you can't get that kind of low light with a normal like DSLR camera, at least to my knowledge. For me, that's one thing that I'm stoked on is the package, not just the camera itself, but the lenses that are included with it. What about the... Sexy monster. Sexy monster. <laughs> you didn't even mention this. I know, right? Beautiful. <laughs> Love it. All right, more questions. All right. My weakness is knowing the correct number in, in tight situations and getting flustered. Would this touch slide be beneficial or more confusing? It's completely customizable. You don't have to. It'll do three things. It'll do three things. But you don't have to do three. No, you can no. say, I just want it to be ISO. You don't have to use it at all. Yeah, you don't have to use it at it's all. It's off by default. You will use it. You, use everybody it. will use it. You're going to use it. You, this is, this is a, a camera changing. Everyone's going to have to rip this off. You know that they're going to have to because we used it this morning. How did you feel about it? Awesome. I think it's great. Fantastic. It's a new thing. So for me, the first time I got it for, on our video shoot, I wasn't used to it. So I didn't know how to react to it. But after you spend like an hour with it, then you start getting the vibe of it. And all you're and like, what the uh, is. that's not going to mess you up because you're only no. going to put on what you What did you think, Lindsay? I was, I was going to say for somebody, if you haven't shot something where the electronic viewfinder, it's giving you feedback of what the exposure will look like. So all you're doing is you're sliding to change things. So you're actually getting feedback. Is this closer or further? So I actually think it won't confuse you because it's telling you, are you getting closer or further away? Yeah, Aileen, I, th I think you can ignore it or you can put as little on as you want, but I think you will love it. Um, let's see. Tina wants to know, uh, what will be the price with the body and the 24 to 105 kit? So what's the kit price? 30, 3300 right? 3300 30, I believe 30. Ooh, 30, hand signals. Uh, this is like 3399 so, 3399 3399 3399 so. Great, that answers that one. All right. Uh, so uh, Pete wants to know, who is the target for this new Canon? Well, it looks like it's video and fashion and travel. and <laughs> You know, that, that is a good question. There's a lot of people that this is going to appeal to. It's not for everybody. There's no one camera that's for everybody. I'm, I'm sorry to say, it's just not no, like that. But can I, can I speak to that real quick? Sure, please. Because you know what? You, you may go, oh, it, it doesn't have this thing and I can't use it. 
That's okay. That's Canon okay. makes all kinds of. You know why Canon doesn't make just one camera? Because everybody has different needs and different uses. There are people who have been dying for Canon to make a mirrorless. Yeah. There have been a lot of people that are going. When Canon makes a full frame mirrorless, they're going to be the first ones on board. And there's people that are going to go. You know what? I, I, it's not for me. I'm a sports photographer. I need right. 14 frames a second, etc. And all. I, I get it. But what you said is such a big thing because every like if Tesla comes out with a new car. And it doesn't have a feature you need. You're like, oh, this thing's uh. a piece of crap. No, they don't make just one car. That's why. Uh, companies like you and like Tesla and like Apple that are pushing the, the boundaries and, and basically showing here's where the future, here's where things are going. Everything that they come out with is not going to be your first choice. But this is just the first one. It's the first one. This is the first one. And I, I'm telling you, I cannot wait. Oh, I can't wait to go shoot this. I mean, I got three shoots in a row coming up. I haven't been this excited to shoot a, get a new camera body, maybe since I got my, my 5D Mark IV, what, two years ago. Right. Well, so this is exciting new stuff. Remember, in 1987, we didn't start with an EOS one. We started with a 630, 650. They were, they were, they were entry type cameras, right. but it quickly, quickly picked up the EOS one and then it grew from there with 650s. And Do you think other cameras may grow from this? Or is this the only one you're going to make? We're making more. <laughs> of course. There's more coming. Oh, uh, here's a good question. Somebody just asked, image stabilization. Is there in-body instabilization? Uh, in video, we have electronic IS, which is a five-axis IS. In, in stills mode, um, it's in the lens. And the reason we do that in lens, especially with super telephotos and telephoto lenses, is it's much more effective. So uh, wide angle, um, it's six one half dozen the other. But again, we're... We're at 11 millimeters, so you're 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 <laughs> very rarely shooting at a 11th of a second, a tenth of a second that way. So, all right, good, thanks. Uh, how long does the battery last? Battery is. Uh, let me go back to these uh, spec sheet numbers. Uh, 370. 370 with the uh, EVF, and then um, 350 uh, EVF 370 LCD. Sorry. Alrighty, and you can get a battery grip. You can get a battery grip, which basically doubles all that. Right, because someone's asking here, uh, Joanna's asking, she's uh, about the always-on display. Now, the, the display isn't really always on on the back. No, it's a very, very, very low power. That's the one on the on top. top. Is the, the LCD on yeah, top is really low power. low power. This one is soon, this one uh, as soon as you put your your you know it changes from your your uh, back screen to the front screen. So if you're right. making menus or anything, it, it actually seems to manage the the. Uh, the, the battery consumption pretty well. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, let's see. When you look through electronic viewfinder, do you see the exposure sessions uh, uh, settings applied, or do you see what you would have seen in a regular viewfinder? And have to rely on your experience on the big screen to know how your exposure will come out. The answer is both. Well, Which both. one do you either, want? Yeah. Do you want to see your preview of the exposure, or do you want to work in in you know a standard full on? Yeah, because some you have to switch to manual mode to be able to see that. And if you're not in right. manual, you won't see no, it. No, we make it very easy. If you want to see your exposure change, we can toggle that on and off. How's that for an answer? That's great. Options. All right, you have <laughs> options. All right, um, do you lose any autofocus ability in the dark when you're using the adapters for the EF mount? Uh, well, when we say the, the EF uh, or the EV negative six, that's with an F1.2 lens. Right. So that's the only we have one here. measurement. So yeah, that's... That's our restriction. It's 1.2. It's not about the lens. All right. Uh, so Keith wants to know, would Lindsay make the switch to a mirrorless camera system now? It was a really good question because I was going to actually put Drew on the spot because originally uh, when I was testing out this camera, the, the gist of what they said to me was, all right, we want to see how it performed for you. We're not saying it will replace your Mark IV. We just want to see the new capabilities and how you feel about them. So. I struggle with this question because there, when I was shooting it, a couple weeks ago I was shooting something with an 85 at 1.2 where I was trying to nail focus, there's an eyelash campaign and I'm super close up and it was not as fast as it would have been with this camera. Like this camera would have focused more quickly and I would have had more controls to focus. So for something like that, I'm like, yeah, that actually would have been better. So why, like, would it, why would or wouldn't I? Why, 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 why would or would wouldn't I choose a Mark IV over this? Like, what, what are the circumstances? Because uh, I, I feel yeah. like I'm well, also one of those people, as far as tough. nerd, if it, if it works and does the job, 
then I like what then I don't really care like, as long as it's doing the job I need so if I have enough megapixels it focuses quickly enough it uses the lenses which is much more important to me that I need for a job then it's going to do the job for me and and Lindsay the sensor and I I know you already know this so I'm not I'm not same, telling you anything you don't know same one, right? the, the sensor is very similar to the 5d mark IV sensor same sensor but there's always customization and, and tweaks to make it fit this body right and but it's very similar it's yeah. if you had to compare it to a sensor that you have and this sensor in the 5d mark IV is wonderful it's pretty stellar <laughs> it's pretty stellar that's the word it's like pretty that. stellar so I, I mean, and that's a, and that's is that your main body, Lindsay? The five D Mark IV. Well, it depends on the job. So I also have a couple because I have a five DS when I'm shooting something oh, yeah. that's going to be huge billboard. Like I have something on the back of a, a bus right now, um, so it's close viewing distance. I need a lot of information. But Mark IV for me is more what I use. Mm -hmm. um, so I I think it's not a trick question, but it is. And that like, well, what do you really need to do your job? Well, you so. answered your own question. It's it's it depends. It really depends on the job that you're doing. And are you going to put a, a 5D4 um, on set with you? Yeah. Are you going to use a, a um, an EOS R shooting sports and action work? Maybe not as much yeah. because of the features of a 5D4 or 1DX are going to outperform it. I feel like if I were shooting low light at night or when I re need fast focus, then that would I would probably right. try out the R. But my Mark IV is like my right hand; it's attached. So, yeah. See, I, see, I, I shoot the Mark IV and I love it, but I, I don't miss it. To be honest with you, because, well, it has the it has the tilt screen, right? <laughs> so, a lot of I shoot automotive. Yeah. When I'm shooting automotive, I'm at that age where I don't like to get on the ground a lot. <laughs> I like to shoot on a platypod. I like to tip my screen up. And as much as I love my 5D Mark IV, and I do, it's my favorite camera ever. I think for me, I think this would probably be the one. Uh, the, now, I'm going to answer some more questions that will tell you some things that, that would, would make me be back and forth. One of them is, and, and, and I know a lot of people want to ask this, and, and, and people are obsessing on this kind of stuff on the web, not for us so much, but for what, what happened with the other camera company's release. Mm -hmm. uh, why only one memory card slot? You know, it all boils down to size, weight, um, everything we can cram into this camera body with what else is going on inside there. It, it's really, <laughs> there's a lot going on inside. When you see these things, what's going on inside, it's a size thing right now. All right, I'm going to ask you, I want to do a Lindsay Adler tough question. Oh, boy. All right. And, and no, but because I, I think this is important in the overall conversation, and I haven't heard anybody ask it. Do you consider this a pro body, or is this considered a consumer body or what what do you consider this this particular one the EOS R this this particular camera you know it's going to be in our advanced amateur line the the, the pro side of things is our, our 1DX series that's always our, right. our 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 top end not that pros so my, don't my use 5D 5D Mark 4 oh it's come on you know it's every, always that tough, every wedding photographer you know, in America uses that? that camera so it's a very tough conversation but realistically this is that um, enthusiast advanced amateur yeah, uh, that's, how, that's so how I see it. It really is targeted towards that. But the know. price, too. The, the price, price is, is really, really yeah. good. Uh, somebody, I saw somebody writing last night online because, of course, we're, we're, we're up late last night. We're posting stuff. And we're talking about it. And I'm reading everybody's comments. And, and one of the persons said, everyone's forgetting about the price. This is the killer thing. Yeah. Like, we're all talking about this spec and that spec. And, oh, it only has one card slot. It's the price. Now, I got to tell you, Eric asked me last night. He goes, in your career, how many cards have you lost? And I'm thinking, three. I've lost. I had three cards go bad. He said, "How many of them were not recoverable?" I got them all back. Like it feel it failed in the field, but then you go home and you call Terry White, and right. Terry White fixes, right. fixes all. It. Terry White fixes every. <laughs> with Lindsay, you call it Terry, right? Wouldn't you call Terry if something went wrong? Totally. Because Terry totally, whatever it is, Terry knows how to fix it. Terry recovered a bunch of my cards for me. I, I love the, all three of them. I think two of them and RC recovered one for me too. But I've never, ever had a card that was unrecoverable that I just lost and never and never had. Now, I realize that not everyone knows Terry, which is why we're giving Terry's cell phone number out <laughs> at the end of the show. So if you ever have a card go down, how many cards have now? I will say you're probably rougher on cards than I am. We are rougher, but I've actually only had one card go bad my entire history. Wow. Right. Lindsay? Well, I think this depends again on how you shoot. I'm shooting tethered in the studio. <laughs> oh, so yeah. So I right. have backup. I don't need a second card slot, but that's for me and the way that I shoot. It's irrelevant. Hey, by the way, just a little tethering note there now that Lindsay brought it up. Do <laughs> you know that when you when you tether on a Canon, it still writes to the card? Yes, it does. Yes. There are other brands, other guys. That doesn't work. Right, and that's how I get my, my backup, like in camera. There you go. I shoot, I shoot Tethered a lot, too. I love Tethered. Hey, shout out to Tether Tools. They're just a great company. If you do shoot Tethered, go to tetheredtools.com. Buy everything they have. 
Okay, uh, a couple more questions because we're running out of time. Um, so, so Jeff said, uh, I missed the beginning of the live show. Uh, any word on other bodies coming? So as a company, do you guys generally talk about unreleased products? But, <laughs> however, however, during the live broadcast last night, you said clearly that this was the first in a new whole system. There's more. There's more. And I can't tell you more than that. Oh, come on. I'm there's just joking. More. There's always there's more. Never, there's always That's our more, job. You can never get anyone. That is That's your our job. job. Right. You finish working on this one. What do you do next? We work on the next one. I mean, there's always people. Or go, maybe we're already working on it. When's the next Photoshop coming out? They're always They're working always on the working next Lightroom. That's your job. It's our job. Creating the new, the new great things. But at this price point, it's just ridiculous. All right. Um, so here comes a nerdy question. <laughs> 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 Nerds. Let's see if a shout out. Nerds. Um, the EOS R has a low pass filter versus none in the Nikon Z7. How noticeable is the difference in the final image? I haven't seen yeah. anything from a, a, the Z7, unfortunately, but um, yeah. you know, we. This is the same sensor and low pass filter you see from from 5D4. So image quality is what you're going to expect. Yeah, it and, really is. Yeah, and the 5D4. Now I I got to see a couple of prints out of here, including some of Lindsay's last night. They had beautiful prints on the wall. Uh, I got to tell you, last night at the at your presentation at the, at the opening, so we're watching a keynote. and It's very nicely done. I mean, it's <laughs> it's a very we're in a small ballroom because there's really just journalists there and influencers and people. So it's it's a, still a small ballroom, but you guys did it like it was a giant ballroom, yeah. and we're watching. It was, yeah, okay. it was as slick a keynote as you're going to see. Great video, which you would expect, right, from Canon. But all this really cool stuff. And at the end, they go, well, we'd like you to be able to, to touch and see the cameras. And the back of the stage opens yeah. up, and there's this whole room, <laughs> and they've got acrobats, and they've got, like, traditional Hawaiian drummers and dancers, and they've got, like, a honeymoon couple and all these things, and all these lenses and all this crazy stuff. And you just walk over the stage, and you walk into th That was, that that was, was so cool. And I go back there, and there's the smoke clears, and Devin's standing there. And he's like, Perfect. look at my 4K video. And I'm like, I hate this guy. What? Jumping out of freaking planes. This is crazy <laughs> stuff. I'm like, I, I, I almost got a sunburn. And he's like, was I was on a plane screaming. And you're kind of comfortable with heights too, aren't you? I'm terrified of heights. Really? But when I have a camera, all that fear goes away. So for me, filming's my my thing. If wow. you guys ever make a camera that I can hold up and my fear of heights goes away, I'll take two. <laughs> all right, uh, we got some, just a couple more questions. We got to go because I think we're probably running over time. Uh, Joe asks a very esoteric question: Will your lens baby work using the adapter? No, Ooh, the I, EF, I, I really don't know. Does the lens baby have an I EF don't mount? Know. I don't. That's... I don't know. I, I'm, I'm gonna say yes because it's an EF mount. It works with my other cameras. So so it should. It's, but it's not autofocus anyway. So. Yeah. I, I, All right. Here's the last round of questions. We got to go. Uh, Alec wants to know: Can we? Can it take a big lens like a uh, 150 to 600? Uh, well, Alec, we actually have the 200 to 400. And we were shooting with it um, in several of our shoots so far. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 200 yes. to 400. Yes, and that's a and and when you say a 150 to 600, you're probably talking about some off-brand. You know, not off-brand. I don't want to make it sound like it was you know just done at a garage sale, but uh, some other camera companies make some right. of these uh, uh, different lens uh, stuff, smaller ones or whatever. But it'll take the big bad boys. It'll take the big bad like boys. 2.8, 400. Even the new 400 2.8, which is 2.2 oh, pounds lighter. Yeah, last night they that no one saw that coming. Two so. big lenses, like a 400 millimeter f 2.8, like two pounds less. 2.2 pounds less. 2.2 pounds less. Ridiculous. Um, all right. What well, uh, what about when using the adapters? Uh, is there weather sealing? Ooh no. Ooh no. Sorry. But I will say this, we were using <laughs> thank, God, um, thank God Devin's here. This setup right here with that adapter with the 1124. I'm going to confirm that right now actually. Going through water spraying, I wouldn't suggest this, but we had no issues with it. The camera wasn't there's no water inside. I yes, there is. Water Wait, there is. There's a there's there a, is. There Sorry, is. My apologies. Even techs are wrong. You know, we could have gone to the vice president of uh, emergency uh, tech. He's over there standing by. Is he standing by in case you black out or yes. anything? Okay, all right. That'd be Rudy Winston. <laughs> Rudy Winston. Rudy is the man. He's the man. We did a live thing with Rudy last night, and people were just like, "I love this guy." Literally, people are writing in the thing. Oh, he's so helpful. There's a line. He's uh, yeah. He's yeah. He's the man. Um, uh, Jared asks, uh, "How many uh, stops are added with the rings?" How many stops? There's are no added? Stop. There's no. No, stops. he's thinking of like a teleconverter where you'd lose a stop or two stops. No, it's no. It, and there's no loss of quality and there's no stops added. No loss of life. All right, Joe wants to know. Um, 
for those who don't who don't purchase bodies all the time, is Canon going to be coming out with an upgraded version of this body in the next year? Well, we really can't answer that question, but uh, <laughs> but you know they're always working on the next camera. Uh, and then this question uh, I'm going to throw to you: dual autofocus at 4K. I don't even know what that means because I'm not a video guy. Yeah, so I've actually until this camera, I've never used autofocus at all. Um, it's always scared me, um, especially with any kind of DSLR type camera. That shoot that we did the video with, the skydiving, it was the first time we've done autofocus at all. I will say when we're like filming people flying down 40 miles per hour, it, it struggled a little bit as far as autofocus. Whenever we were filming people like kind of your normal, typical situations, we were a little bit extreme. Um, we were using all autofocus for all that stuff. And to me, wow. it was pulling it seamlessly. I could touch the screen and it would rack focus. And it wasn't like a jittery rack focus. It was a smooth mm -hmm. rack focus. Yeah. So for me, that was like a huge deal. So the answer is yes. So the answer is yes. Dual Pixel CMOS AF in 4K. All right. Juan, how much time are we over by? Oh, we're 10 minutes. Wow. Oh. Could be worse. We had we had made this like promise that we would not go over an hour, and, and well, well, we blew it out. But Whoops. we wanted to get as many questions as, as we could. Uh, so thank you, guys. Uh, yeah. Thank you for being on the show your first time. I thank hope you. it's not the last. Hopefully Lindsay, not. number four. Yep. No big deal. See you soon. Number Drew. For me. Just me. Drew. First thank time. you, guys. First time. Thank you. And uh, thanks to our friends at Canon. Uh, they're, they're constantly pushing the envelope. Uh, we were honored that they ha allowed us to be out here for this launch. This was Last night was so exciting. It was really great to, yeah. to see it all come. Uh, but but for the highlight, I know, for Eric and I was was getting our hands on it and, and doing the training. Uh, when you when you see all the things that this does that no one's talking about yet because no one's no one's, no one's seen, it, seen yet. it yet no one's really touched it I mean you guys kept this in such a cocoon it was really really tightly controlled but when we sat there today there, there was a, like I realized at some point I'm like wow I'm like I'm holding the future like there are things that you're doing right now that that sadly will be stolen by other camera companies but you guys are always pushing the, the boundaries. I'm, uh, I'm really proud of what you guys have done with this. And I don't mean that in any kind of condescending no, way. Thank you. We but tried. I, I love it that you guys are, are, are trying really cool new things and ergonomically and thinking about how photographers work. I think that's really important. We appreciate so thank you guys thank you. Uh, for being here. Thanks to all of our friends at Canon USA Imaging. And we will catch you guys next week on The Grid. Take care, everybody.